The other day I was talking to one of the teachers who works here at the Liz Music Academy and we ended up talking about anxiety and the anxiety that one feels before trying something new. In this case the context was teaching new students. Uh, we were talking about how stressful it can be before we meet someone new and uh, how stressful it can be for the student and the teacher. Anxiety, right? So where does that anxiety come from? Why do we get so nervous before we meet someone new? Why do we become fearful or stressed or excited? But there's always an emotional reaction. And I would even add, hopefully, there is an emotional reaction. So, I believe that those reactions are perfectly normal, expectable and desirable. We want to feel something before we meet someone new, especially in this context of meeting a new student. As a teacher, I'm always super excited to find out if this student is going to engage, if this student is super excited about the lesson, if not, maybe this student is a bit shy, what's going to happen? There's always a, some sort of mystery in the air before I meet a new student. And that's awesome. However, there can be more reasons for why you are stressed and nervous before a new gig, a new job, a new student. Maybe you're just not prepared enough and you know it. Preparation is at the essence of feeling relaxed and confident. Don't get me wrong, being self-confident is great, you have confidence on yourself, awesome. But why? I truly believe that it is fundamental to stay prepared. And that's something that so many people overlook. We can't do it any longer. So how can you prepare yourself so you don't freak out and go all anxious before going on stage or teaching a new student or whatever you're scared of? Well, first and foremost, you need to know exactly what's going to be required of you. So if you are stressed out or anxious before meeting a new student, well, remind yourself, have I taught before? Yes, maybe you haven't, but let's pretend you have. Have I met human beings before? Yes, check the box. So what can be different that time? Well, you don't know that person specifically. So can you ask questions before you guys meet? If that calms you down, do that. For me, for example, I like the excitement of not knowing the person. I like the excitement of meeting someone new and asking the question, what's your story? I want to hear everything. So that opens up a conversation and that is a great icebreaker. So for me, it's actually more interesting to not know a lot about the students. However, I still, to this day, a thousand something private students later, feel a little bit stressed. Maybe excitement mixed with anxiety before I meet a new student. But I love it. I like that feeling. So what else can you do to prepare yourself? Why don't you read some books? I wrote one, by the way. And if you do that, you're going to be acquiring knowledge. And knowledge is power. And power is confidence. So if you are confident that you know what you're going to be dealing with, then you will be okay. Stress and anxiety will go away. So this is what I mean by prepare yourself over time. So you don't have to do it every time. Do you know why I don't really need to know everything about all my new students? because I do a lot of overtime preparation. I read a lot, I write a lot, I visualize a lot, I practice a lot, I practice teaching, I practice conversations, I have them in my head, I discuss things with other tutors, you know, or, or we exchange ideas, and that is preparation. That's overtime preparation. So when a new student comes along, I've seen that, I've experienced that. People only have so many angles. So if you have a stubborn student, well, I've dealt with that before, I'll deal with it again. If I have an overly excited student, it's awesome, but it can be trouble. I've dealt with that before, so I can deal with it again. And even if I haven't dealt with it before, I've practiced it. So 
it's not just here that you have to practice. It's also your teaching. I strongly advise that you do that. I strongly advise that you practice talking to your students. Do that at home. If you have a practice room where you can make a bunch of noise playing drums, I'm sure you can also practice speaking. Also, make sure you practice the extremes. In other words, don't just practice teaching your past self. Don't just practice teaching an easy student. Imagine yourself dealing with a really difficult student. Fortunately for me, I've had a few of them over the last 12 years, so I don't need to imagine. I just gotta go back there. And when I go back there and I see myself in front of those students again, I ask myself, what could I have done better? What could I have done differently that actually could help those students? Because I do believe that whenever I lost a student or whenever I found myself thinking that maybe that student wasn't getting it, I believe that that's my fault. So practice the extremes, focus on the difficult situations and find solutions. The more you focus on finding solutions, the quicker you will get there. You want better answers? Ask better questions. Thank you.